this is my first library presentation and I'm so nervous. <laughs> um, <hey. laughs> okay. So, um, Mountain View's ESL Conversation Club is fairly young. We started about a year ago. We just had our birthday party. Um, all of the pictures from on the slides are from our birthday party. Uh, so Mountain View, like the rest of Silicon Valley, is increasingly international. Um, I just saw an article in Business Week which said, in the Silicon Valley, 51% of people speak a language other than English at home. Um, that's compared to 21% in the rest of the country. So there really is that need for ESL. And there's also, um, our patrons were asking. So when patrons ask, you answer, right? Um, so the way that we started ours, we got a student from the UC Santa Cruz Extension Program. Um, he was a teaching English to speakers of other languages student, and he did it for his practicum project. Uh, he designed the flyer and led the first six clubs. Uh, since then, I've been leading and uh, prepping and doing most of them. Occasionally, I go away, so I've had a couple subs. Um, so we meet Wednesdays from 5 to 6 p.m., and we have an average attendance of between 30 and 40 people each week. Um, some people have been coming since day one. Some people come every couple months. Some people come for, to just one or two, and then they don't come back. Um, our, main our main concentration is on building confidence rather than building skills. Uh, so, let's see. Okay. Um, so our rules are very simple. The rule is have fun and encourage others to speak. Uh, we're very permissive. We let people come late. We let people leave early. Um, you, see if there's a topic, you don't have to talk about the topic. Uh, the, the, we're different from a lot of clubs in that we allow children. Um, normally this means uh, there'll be a mom with a baby on her lap or in the, sh in the stroller, but sometimes this means that we've had um, eight-year-olds sit in on conversation or 13-year-olds come and they participate. So we really mean everyone is welcome. Uh, so the reason we allow children is uh, childcare is generally is often an issue for people that are new to the country. You may not have the connections, you may not have family. So allowing people to bring their children may, means that a lot of people who couldn't come can come. Um, it, it's not really an issue because the nature of the club is so chaotic. Um, people talking to each other generates a lot of noise. So if there's a child running around the room making airplane noises, it's just part of the chaos. Um, and it also gives people something to chat about. People talk about being parents. Um, they talk about the things that the kids are doing. So uh, it's really a positive. We remember the cardinal rule of children's programming, which is always have crayons. Um, OK? So uh, we use a couple different formats. We experiment with trying new things all the time. The most common thing we do is we meet in groups of about six. Um, each table group will generally have a native speaker. I'll put together a topic sheet that will um, have a few conversation starter questions, some idioms to talk about, maybe something local that's coming up. Um, but we also do things like, uh, sometimes we meet in the speed dating format. So um, people have short seven minute conversations um, and they rotate around the room and people really enjoy that. Recently we tried, um, due to somebody misspeaking, we tried speed double dating. Um, which was a lot of fun. So we had table groups of four, and then two people moved every, I think we did like 14 minutes. Um, but we've also done things like photo scavenger hunts. I put people in groups and send them around the library to um, take pictures with a staff member making a funny face, or I ask them, um, what books would you find in 428.24, which is ESL books. Um, but basically any icebreaker game um, is workable. So another thing I've done is I've had them choose um, pairs of opposites, like day or night, or uh, summer and winter, and then at the end we've gotten together as a group and had people stand. Have you ever done that in a big group? You stand on the line, and if you like summer you go over here, and if you like winter you go over here, and if you like them both equally you stand in the middle, and you see where you stand on a different issue. Um, so we've done that. Uh, we played card games. I taught them all how to play Go Fish. Um, and then they taught us their card games. And um, quarterly, we've had potlucks. And I just have to tell you that an ESL potluck is the best potluck you will ever go to. Mm -hmm. um, I've had, I've been like, somebody held me down and said, you must try kvass, try kvass. 
don't ever try it, it's gross, but um, <laughs> it was a good experience to have. But I've had really excellent pierogies and um, oh, fabulous sushi, like really good food. Um, and at our potlucks, we play human bingo. So I give them each a bingo card. I have to explain how you play bingo to a lot of people, which is fun. And then I say things like, find somebody with a tattoo, or find somebody who's been to five different countries. And they go around and meet each other, and write each other's names down. Um, so the topics that are most successful for our club have been food and American culture. Um, and so for food, you talk about questions like what, what foods do you miss from home or what foods have you tried here? Or you say, where are the best ramen restaurants? And um, you'll get lots of good advice. Uh, American culture, we, uh, you try to think about what experiences that are sort of um, universally American that you have as kids. Like, for example, in this photo, we're making handprint turkeys. Um, and you try to give them that experience. So if uh, so if they say, you know, if you're there in a situation where people are talking about handprint turkeys, they can say, oh, yes, I've made one of those. I know what that is. Um, the holidays are always a good topic, and we're actually coming up with a fantastic, it's a fantastic time to have an ESL club right now because the holidays right now are blam, 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 blam. So, like, you talk about Halloween, you talk about Veterans Day, you talk about Thanksgiving, lots of stuff to talk about. Oh, local knowledge is, an, is another good one. Um, so things like how do you stay cool in summer, those sort of things that you may not know. Anything where you would tell a tourist in that information. Uh, so our native speakers. So some of you who work in San Jose may know the woman on the left. She's a, an ardent library supporter. Um, she's also an ESL teacher, and she has been with us since the first day. She volunteers and um, is a native speaker. So uh, we treat our native, our volunteers, or our native speakers um, a little differently. We consider them to be program participants. Um, so we don't ask them to commit. Um, we just, if they come, we sort of give them a few guidelines, like try to make other people speak more than you speak. Um, and they participate in the conversation just like everybody else. Uh, so that allows two things. It gives us a way to offer people that want to help at your library. Um, a way that's very easy, that's a low commitment or no commitment way. Um, and it also, um, and don't tell my boss, but it allows us to circumvent um, our very uh, strict volunteering process. We, we send our volunteers through background checks. They have to fill out an application. Uh, they have to log in and log out. So this is a way that they don't have to do that. Um, uh, we generally have between three and eight volunteers. Um, another plus is a lot of our volunteers are people who um, are also wanting conversation practice. So it's an opportunity to sit and have a nice conversation with people no matter what your uh, native language is. So um, just finally, my last slide, I just want to say, um, so the theme of this Library of Futures is uh, fostering communities, and it really does that. Um, it allows people who have just moved to the area to meet others, um, to find friends, to learn how they can get involved with the community. We've had a lot of our participants who um, have said, oh, I want to volunteer. How do I volunteer at your library? Or can I apply for this paid jo page job? So um, they have started to get more involved both with the community and with the library. And uh, for us, it's just such a positive experience to be able to take an hour each week, have really nice, pleasant conversations with our patrons, figure out what they want, what services we need to provide. Um, it's, it's really just been very eye-opening and a, a positive experience. Thank you.